transposing America. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, as we just discussed, killer Audrey Hale was living in a sick fantasy world, one that was affirmed and celebrated by modern culture. The fraudulent construct, the boys can become girls and girls can become boys. In her twisted mind, her mortal enemies are those who do not affirm her imaginary identity. In this case, her old Christian school and her family. And thus, she goes and blows away six innocent people, including three small children. Now, the knee-jerk political response, very predictable, it's to blame the gun culture, urge that AR-15s be banned. But this avoids the undeniable truth that the left has created a world that has our young people on a collision course with reality, one that's aligned against the Judeo-Christian tradition, at odds with basic common sense, even basic human biology. And our educational, our corporate, and our political leaders are creating Generation L. L for lost and lonely and looking, looking for meaning and love in all the wrong places. Now, as is typical, the left rushes to deflect blame for where their horrid policies and anti-values have taken us. What I will say to Republicans in Congress is, what are you going to say to these parents? Obviously, they must not believe in an afterlife because they know the consequences of what they are doing. Pronouns do not kill children, right? People with guns kill children, and it's going to be a distraction in our coverage. You know what's not a distraction? The fact that more young people today are reporting mental illness, suicidal thoughts, depression. They're reporting more of this than ever before. So they're more connected with the internet and all their devices, yet they're less connected than ever before. Why is that? Well, social media is a black hole, encouraging bullying, buffoonery, sexualization of young people, a total time suck, and, of course, encouraging body image disorders. Most Americans are just waking up now to the grip it has on our kids. We don't want our children to turn out as entitled cynics or despondent slackers. That means it's incumbent upon each of us to teach them that they have inherent worth as human beings that God has a special path for them, all of them, and that, yes, they're blessed to live in our country, which has been founded on liberty, that there's virtue and hard work and patriotism. So tonight I'm asking, what happened to that America? A shocking new poll in the Wall Street Journal shows a steep decline in our patriotism. Back in 1998, 70% of Americans said it was very important to them, the idea of patriotism. Today, that support has nosedived to only 38 percent, almost halved. The most startling fact is the collapse in Democrats' patriotism. Now, why has this happened? Democrats used to value patriotism, FDR, JFK, and, yes, Bill Clinton. He sounded pretty patriotic in his day. The demands of our time are great, and they are different. Let us build our bridge. A bridge wide enough and strong enough for every American to cross over to a blessed land of new promise. It's very hopeful. Well, the real problem started, of course, with the Obamas. Early on in his career, Barack Obama was hopeful. He sounded hopeful. In 2004, during that famous speech that launched his career, he said, that famously, there are no red states or blue states, that we are the United States. But then he became more and more negative as time went on. America has shown arrogance and been dismissive, even derisive. The United States is still working through some of our own darker periods in our history. People in this country are ready for change and, and, and hungry for a different kind of politics. For the first time in my adult life, I am proud of my country. But Trump turned that around, didn't he? He leaned into patriotism to build a new movement of dedicated Americans who were tired of the government subverting our national interest. We'll rekindle new faith in our values, new pride in our history, and a new spirit of unity that can only be realized through love for our great country. Well, Democrats didn't care how much they hurt the country or hurt our national pride. 
They had a weaponized FBI. They had a summer of riots. Cities burned. People beaten and killed. Statues and monuments torn down, celebrated them being torn down, Taliban-esque. They sold the relentless message that America is systemically racist and evil. It's still being sold. It's a lie, and it's being sold every day by this administration, all to energize their base to turn out against Trump back in 2020 and now perhaps in 2024. And they still haven't stopped They're using government prosecutors to harass President Trump to this very day, to jail nonviolent January 6 protesters, and even to harass journalists who are exposing their ongoing fraud, like Matt Taibbi. I'm sure it was just a coincidence that IRS agents showed up at his house. Well, Democrats don't really care, though, about the consequences of swinging this wrecking ball as long as they win in 2024. They prefer Americans put their trust in global institutions anyway. They've already convinced the rest of the world that we're corrupt and evil, and now they're finding a more receptive audience here at home. And who could ever, ever imagine the entertainment community today producing a film that puts China in a bad light? Can you imagine it? I can't. Where's that documentary about the Hong Kong freedom protesters? Or a real film about Mao's great leap forward and the millions upon millions he killed? How about the plight of the Uyghurs? Of course not. They're going to do any of that. But Hollywood loves putting America down. Well, except maybe for Maverick, Top Gun, and even in that movie, remember it was an amorphous enemy that wouldn't offend anyone out there in the movie-going audience. The target is an unsanctioned uranium enrichment plant built in violation of a multilateral NATO treaty. The uranium produced there represents a direct threat to our allies in the region. There? Where's there? Well, the repercussions of all of this, of the devaluing of patriotism, is enormous. America is never going to improve unless more of us love America enough to sacrifice for America and help figure out how to make it a better place. We need voters who are so invested in saving this country that they actually demand better leaders next time. And we need to insist on holding all of our elected officials in both parties accountable. Biden cannot, I don't care what you're saying or what you believe tonight, Biden cannot be the best we can do in 2024. He's been outmaneuvered and outsmarted at every turn on the world stage. He's wrecked our economy and is now opening the door to China's becoming the strongest power in the world. We're expanding legal pathways for migration to seek safety in humanitarian, on a humanitarian basis. So today, I applaud China for stepping up. Excuse me, I applaud Canada. One of those sea countries. Now, the left is spreading vicious lies about America and our schools. This is very poisonous. Of course, sadly, the Republican Party in the Republican Party, people are also losing faith as well. They see how bad the situation really is. A woke military, a hostile business community, anti-American schools, where, again, everyone's taught that the country is systemically racist. So people on the right are also becoming discouraged. So at some point, if enough conservatives think that every institution of the government and the culture is aligned against them, it's even going to be difficult to get them to sacrifice and wave the flag. So let me say this tonight. Republicans must avoid the pessimism trap as well. If they're convinced that voting doesn't matter because the other side will cheat anyway, then they don't show up to vote, uh, how are you going to fix this mess that we're in? But the stakes are too important to let that happen. We are indeed at a tipping point. I know a lot of people say that, but we're at it. We have no time to argue about the obvious or deny basic facts or pretend we're living in a fantasy world where, you know, one sex can become another sex. We can't allow charlatans to divide us. Hard work, family, faith, and patriotism is what will save us. They always have. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.